Now that the beautiful and rare 1967 Hemi GTX convertible is completely restored, it's being loaded onto the trailer to be delivered to its owner in Las Vegas. The owner, Brett Torino, flew in for the reveal and was blown away by the ghoul's attention to detail. But just when the ghouls thought they might be finished, there's another car ready to be delivered. Take it away, Mark. Our 1972 Dodge Charger SE 400 Magnum 4-speed, one of only 126 ever built, is near completion. Once Dave and Alyssa install the interior, all that'll be left is an electrical systems check, a complete detail, and we can have the owner down for his initial inspection and road test. On this episode of Graveyard Cars, Alyssa applies everything she's learned over the last 13 weeks when it's up to her to install the interior in the 1972 Gold Charger. The ghouls wrestle with how far they can prep the car, knowing that the owner wants to be the first person to drive it. Meanwhile, while attempting to disassemble a 1971 Cuda convertible, Mark and Royal run into problem after problem. And in the middle of the heat, Brett Torino sends Mark and the gang an unexpected surprise. Coming up on this episode of Graveyard Cars. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life to exactly the way they were on the day they were born. Uh, we're working on our 1972 Dodge Charger uh, SE 400 Magnum 4 speed, one of 126 built, which is really cool. We got our dash in from Instrument Specialties and it's amazing. So that's basically what uh, we're gonna install today. I have not worked on dashes before. This is my first time, so I'm pretty excited. I think this is the last piece of the interior that I need to learn. Done. Is this so, pretty standard for a, a dash or? Yeah, it's a pretty standard dash uh, for 72 Dodge Charger SE. It's pretty one too, I like all the chrome. Oh yeah, it's pretty awesome. All right, and I'm gonna walk through. So as far kinda... as the door opens? Yeah, that's it. Wow. These doors are huge. You just keep walking in. Sure. Okay, how you doing, okay? Doing good. Now I want to kind of tip this towards you. Okay. You can go ahead and get in there. I'm going to try to hook these up. This is the complicated part. I got to get this cable on there. Do all dashes install the same? Yeah, basically all these Mopars install the same. For the most part, it's all just like it's showing there. What Sorry are you about that. I know you're probably right getting tired. I'm hooking up the, the cables for the defroster. So let me move this down. So right now I'm just kind of getting all the... Oh, take your time. Just came in this morning, went to head to the booth to get some parts and pieces painted, and there's a motor sitting in there. Looks like it's ready to be sprayed. I like Mark to really sign off on these motors, so I need to get him out here just to look this motor over and make sure it's actually ready to paint. Marcus, looking all over for you. I've been right here putting engines together. There's a motor sitting in the paint booth. That you've painted already. Nope. It's an engine, but yes. Whatever. Go ahead. Um, is it ready to go? Your green light go to paint it. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Do you want to know what color you're going to paint it? I know. Oh, you do? What color are you going to paint Orange. it? Orange. Mike, can you get Walter Chrysler on the phone? I got him right here. All right. I don't think there's such thing as a short answer with Mark. Everything seems to go on and on forever. You think I would have learned this by now, but I thought I would be safe with the motor. I wasn't. I just know that there. You should be able to walk into that booth and based on the alphanumeric codes stamped onto it, you've been here long enough now that you wouldn't need to know what car it's for. It's an E440. What color does it go? Orange. <laughs> hmm. Mike, all E440s go orange? Uh, 69. Um, How do you know 69 is an E code? Well, because that's because I know an F is a 70. Uh huh. So one year before that would be right. 69. What if it wasn't an HP 440? It doesn't matter. Still got the same 
Oh, they wouldn't paint it turquoise, a low performance 440. Starting in 1965, Chrysler would stamp the information pad with an alpha letter A, representing 1965. It would have a B for 66, a C for 67, a D for 68, and so on up till the time it trailed off somewhere in the mid to late 70s. If this was a low performance 1971 383, it would get blue, the corporate blue they called it. Same thing in 70. All right, go over here to this little stamp. See that stamp right there? Mm -hmm. What's it say? H. And next to it? P. And what do you reckon that stands for? High performance. High performance, high performance, all right. Uh, two hours later, I now have the answer. It does go orange, so I'm going to head in the booth and start spraying it. With the owner only days away, Alyssa is tasked with installing the 1972 Chargers interior. I'm done. <laughs> wow. It was way easier with the that adjustable. Was, that was fast. It took you like, what, five minutes to do that? Yeah, it wasn't bad. That the trick fast. is getting the side in that isn't adjustable, the tracks. Oh, getting yeah. those in and then makes it really easy. Uh, this is cool. Yeah, you have a lot of room. Yeah. Big. Awesome. Nice job. Thanks. Beautiful. Good job. So what else do you need help with to get this finished up? Right now you can put in your kick panels and put in your sill plates and that'll kind of button up the entire floor. Uh, the only problem is those kick panels, one of them is really sun-baked. Uh, so we're going to try to do a little process, uh, try a new process actually with the walnut shells because we have a, a new blaster with walnut shells in there so we're going to try to fix up that plastic and make it like new the most desirable muscle car made by mopar of all time would have to be the 71 hemi cuda convertible making only 11 of them they sell for millions of dollars this 1971 cuda convertible has a 340 and a three-speed manual transmission making it one of only eight ever built the disassembly of this rare valuable and desirable muscle car begins now We got the windshield and the reveal moldings off, but what a The problem is people back in the day, especially car leaks, it can't be anything but the windshield. It can't be the cow pivots. It can't be the dash. It can't be the cowl itself. It can't be the fact they left the top down in the rain. It's gotta be that windshield. So they just start doping it up with more and more sealer. So you have inches and mountains of sealer. Then they glue the reveal moldings in because they busted half the clips taking them out and they go, well, the man that owns this doesn't need to know about that one. We just put a little urethane in there and pat it back down. And it isn't until 40 years later when the fat man, the bald guy, and my best friend Mike start taking this car apart that we realize it's been uh, <laughs> glued together. I'm done with my rant. We're ready to drop the dash down out of it. That's a good thing. Sorry about the bald thing. I lashed nope. out because I was mad over this. Okay. But I, but I caught it. it before I got to you. And that's fine that's with me. Self -control. That's self-control. See, that's self-control. So with them getting the dash out of it here in a couple of minutes, we're gonna be able to uh, move on to the rest of the disassembly. It should go a lot faster from here. That just, that windshield really slowed us down. All right, so we got our motor here for the General Lee. It is all going completely hemi orange. So it's all ready to go. That was good information that Mark gave us with the little numbers that are up there. All in all, that's still a couple hours worth of talking to him before I got the actual color for this. But I got it, motor's in here, everything's good to go. So I can go ahead and get the DP90 on this and then start to hit it with the single stage. Okay, but there's not much left. So, I need to go check my cabinet, but there's a very solid chance we're out of single stage. That means I have to order more. Well, poop. Uh, we realized I didn't have any color, so. No, well, that's it. I had to order that. So we're kind of at a standstill. It's in DP90, so. That's fine. All right. Well, I got some scotch bright. All right. Yeah, scotch how's it looking? Bright. I think it's looking good. All right. 
thing's pretty cool, huh? The yeah, blaster. it's fun too. Oh wow, that looks a lot better. Oh yeah, that looks really cool. But let's kind of see what the scotch sprite does. And you don't have to push really hard. Kind of run it wow. on there. But you see how we still got all the grain from mm -hmm. the plastic in there? You know, we were talking about the fact that the car's a stripper. They didn't even care about having the electric windshield washer, so that's what this is. So instead of having the uh, button on the dash that you would push for the uh, windshield washers, like in the B body or in the E body, in this particular case, you would have a foot pump. You would make, physically pump that to get the fluid up onto the windshield. They didn't have any effort at all on the three speed even to make it cool. Like, why couldn't they have built a pistol grip <laughs> three speed? But that's they what could've. it is. It's just a straight chrome shaft with a ball on the end of it. The bezel is the exact same one that you would have if you had a, four speed? First, a pistol grip four speed. But the boot itself is different because this has a round hole in it and the pistol grip is that oblong yeah. center hole in it. But yeah, just some kind of interesting little little tidbits there that, that make this car so unique and and yet in some ways very undesirable, but now that it's 45, 50 years later. It's all cool. It's all cool, yeah. It's all the kind of stuff. Because if we saw stuff like that as a kid, we say, oh, pass on that. It's got a yeah. three speed and you got to pump the foot to, to get washer fluid up on the windshield. But now looking back, it's kind of a cool part of history. So I'd like to point out is how nice it is to work on a small block. Look at the room in there. Remember the last one we put in a 440? Every square inch in the way in, just everything's tight. You got to rock it and walk it. Just like a piece of cake. Look at that big old, big old cavity in there just swallowing up that 340. Just That's like your first girlfriend. For a daily driver, there's not small. a thing in there. Don't interrupt people, punk. Fat old guy. Oh, I'm fat. What about you, Muffin Belly? Look at you. Hey, along with age comes wisdom. You got better breasts than my wife, man. Back off. I've seen that look before. Back off. They turned out great. It got all the old plastic off, and it underneath was great black new plastic. So looks like we're going to be able to save the piece. Yeah, yeah, it looked great. So all we got to do is get those eight pillar moldings in, windshield surround, uh, then we'll work down to our kick panels. The kick panel went in really well. The seal plate I had a little bit of trouble with, lining up the holes and, yep. and yeah, getting the carpet underneath it. And I think at one point I got, I thought I had gotten four screws in, and then I lifted yeah. it up and the whole thing came undone. <laughs> what the f Did it just so pop right up? So I guess none of them were. None of them <laughs> no. were. <in. laughs> <laughs> and I realized I didn't get any of those in, so I had to start over. Yeah. So something so simple can take like half hour, 45 minutes just to get a few screws in. It can be kind of frustrating it sometimes. Is. It is frustrating. These cars will fight you every step of the way. All right, so what do you say we knock out our visors? That sounds good. And then we're, yeah, we're just about there. Are these the original? Yeah, these are the original ones. He wanted to use, uh, you know, as many of the original parts as he could. Okay, now this deal, the little spring, will actually go up through the big hole. Right here? Yep. Oh, there we go. You can kind of see. Yeah. One's just a little safer. All right, cool. So I got mine in there and whoop, look at that. That much closer to driving it too, yes. which is always nice. So awesome. Uh, the the interior is pretty much put in, which is great. So the next steps is just uh, a couple little things here and there and then the windshield. And the windshield right. to go fast. All we got around that is just some stainless steel molding. And then I just got to put the wiper arms on. Oh, wow. So it's really close. With the interior installed, this 1972 Charger is nearly ready for the owner's arrival and its first test drive. Ouch. All right. Oh. Everything. Okay. Everything's just been a complete pain in the ass on this car. And it's, it's because take some cars apart, they've never been touched. You're better off with a car that's never been touched than one that's been touched from the standpoint of disassembly. Because every bolt has been stripped and lost and, ch and changed out for the wrong bolt. We've took out lag bolts out of here, wood screws out of here. It just takes forever to do that. Something that's normally a half a day job takes all day long. And that's, that's what we're struggling with right now. You can see lots of body work's been done on this car. I'll do you a little magic right here. You guys ready for some magic? We're gonna debondo this thing. That's where somebody just fills it up with Bondo and fiberglass and says, wow, look at that, isn't that pretty? This, folks, is what they Bondoed over. That's how you can tell somebody's been there. I'd rather walk up to a car and just see the hole and know I'm buying a car with a hole in it than something like that.
So once the torsion bars are disconnected like this, really it's just a matter of lowering it down out of the cavity. Same way we put it back in when we do the reverse. All right, you're clear. That is such a giant piece of everything. It is. So really all we've got left, uh, we gotta take a couple of the rear moldings off around the convertible top and take the tail lights out of it and then it's ready to go over and get dipped. So we'll be anxious to see what it looks like when it gets back, but it's nice. pretty close to ready. Good job. Now that the 1971 CUDA convertible has been dissected, Mark gathers all hands on deck to help him unload the trailer. After Mike delivered the Hemi GTX, Brett Torino donated a trailer full of rare and valuable parts to Mark and the Ghouls. I want to count and inventory every component. I want to put a mental note as to what it is, where it is, what condition it's in. Once that's done, they're going to load everything up into the pod up there. That's what they're building shelves for now. That way it can be under lock and key and away from everybody. The only time a part will come out of there is with my authorization and my key to the lock. The guys are doing good. So is that, that's all that's left is that part right up there? Okay. So are you going to go through these yourself? Each I'm going to go through every one of these myself, get my head on it, decide what it's worth, if it's worth something. There's a ton of parts here. I'm here to make sure that they get inventoried the right way, to make sure everything's accounted for, and that they get put in the storage units the right way. So stuff right there. there's a lot of valuable stuff. I don't really know a whole lot about them, but as I get to go through them with my dad, I'm, I am learning. So it's a great experience to be able to go through them. Holy cow. That is a gift that he said was coming. He said he had some original parts books. God. See, that's the difference between his books and my books. See, yeah, when, they look original. When he, well, no, thank you for playing. Well, I mean, they just look old. Like, Well, mine look old too, but my, can I finish my sentence? You're, you're a sentence finisher, aren't you? You're a sentence finisher. I guess. Yeah. These are in almost mint condition. Mine have been rolled over and set at the bottom of a manure pile for 20 years. This is a nice original. I don't know what year until I open it, but I'm gonna guess 66, 67. 66, yeah. This is a complete original parts manual for the 1966 passenger cars, Dodge passenger cars. But look at all the wow. tabs. If you look at mine, my tabs are all ripped off and gnawed off and chewed off and burned. This thing has everything nicely tabbed and categorized. So this is really exciting for me. It may not mean much to you because you don't know what they all are, but. For me, this is a treasure trove of really valuable parts. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is cool. If I went to a swap meet and saw this stuff, I'd go home broke. <laughs> I'd have to have it all. So I'm gonna let him finish taking everything out because I'm literally on a lot of this stuff, I'm gonna wanna unwrap it before we put it into storage. I need to put my eye on it. One guy's version of mint condition or mink, Sandy would say, and another guy's is different, so. I want to make sure what condition the parts are in, what ones I need now for the cars that we actually have here, and uh, and then we'll we'll reconvene back out here. So you're going to continue helping him unload? Yep. Okay. So radiator supply house just got here, and they're getting ready to do the stencil work on top of this radiator. So the owner wanted the top of his radiator painted, at least to say one of 126. So at least when he's at car shows, he can open up the hood and people will know that, hey, it's still kind of a rare car. It's kind of cool with what they did on the radiator because he's kind of done little touches to it to make it his own. So we don't do a lot of that here, but on this car we did. So it's a little unique in that aspect. Meanwhile, outside the shop, Mark and Alyssa continue to toil over the inventory for Torino's donation. We've been out here now for Seven hours. Seven hours checking in parts. And uh, we're, getting the, we're getting it whittled down. Uh, the main stuff, we've got glass left and some of the bigger sheet metal and some wheels, but all the little stuff, the stuff that takes so long to label and print and mark, which is what I'm doing, so we have a, a quality inventory of everything, that's what takes so long. Uh, I've gone through, I think, a hundred and some tags already. So what she does is she checks it, what's it say it is? Tag 183 is for a complete NOS grill for a 1970 Barracuda. Okay, mark it off, but note that the left hand front park lamp is missing. Missing one park lamp. And what number is it, 183? 183. 
So I've got it over here. This one's all one unit. This is all part of an NOS 1970 CUDA grill. This stuff's gold. At this point, I feel like I have been at an auction all day where I've just been hearing numbers being yelled at me and my job is to basically check them. So they're not in order though. So I have about eight pages of numbers that aren't in any order that every time I hear one, I just have to go through it and find it. So anyways, I'm ready for this to be done. I feel like we're never gonna be finished. I look back and I just feel like there has been little progress made yet. We've been sitting here for hours, so. We've, we've unloaded so much stuff, a lot, a lot of NOS stuff, good quality used stuff that definitely is gonna help a lot of cars get back on the road again. The good news is we're, we're really winding down quickly here. We're gonna try to wrap this up yet today. If we don't, we'll have to knock it out first thing in the morning, but we're getting really, really close. Before the 1972 Charger's first test drive, Royal makes preparations to do the alignment. What's the first step in this process, Royal? I mean, I know- we'll Hang these sensors on. Okay. And when we do, since those are aftermarket billet wheels, we can clamp, I think we can clamp to the outside. Okay. We can turn these over and clamp to the outside. Neither, we don't have to worry about scratching them, right? Yeah. All right. Now what's the trick uh, with doing these older Mopars as opposed to the new cars? The older cars have a caster adjustment, a camber adjustment, and a tow-in adjustment. Where your newer cars, a lot of them only have a tow adjustment. Some of them oh, wow. only have a camber and tow adjustment. Oh, wow. So, Royal, after we get these sensors uh, mounted on the wheels, what's the, the next step of the process? We'll look up the specs, and then uh, the computer will have us do a caster sweep. Oh, gotcha. So that's just kind of checking where the car's at. It's yes. Kind of start, giving it a starting point. Yes. The alignment came out fine. Um, really, the test will be when the uh, customer drives it. He doesn't want us to take it out of the lot till he gets here, so we're gonna have to wait for the real test. I'll be able to drive around the lot and get kind of a feel for it. Make sure the steering wheel's straight at least. The 72 Charger's alignment is complete, and coincidentally, Mark and Alyssa are finally ready to wrap up the inventory on Torino's donation. It's a huge relief to finally have this done and have the parts up there. I mean, it took yep. us over a day to get them all inventoried. Uh, when you're inventorying in that many parts, that many pieces, some of them very small, most of them or a majority of them, new old stock, super valuable. It just takes time. And that's what we experienced, you know, putting everything away is you got to check it, see what they called it, make sure it's what they called it, make sure it's a new old stock and not just a used one. There were quite a few mistakes like that. Make sure the part's there or it's not there, or it's damaged or it's not damaged. There's just a lot goes into it. And like I say, when you have a trailer that came back full of parts, it's a big job. Uh, we powered through it, we got it done. Uh, the guys are just getting ready to upload a couple of pieces and that's gonna be it for the end of that. These are ready to be lifted up and go in. Okay, and you've counted for all those, the 603 and the 605s. Yeah. This stuff here, I just wanna put aside for right now. It can be lifted up and put in the bin and just kept in a corner. This is the no value stuff, but in case Brett wants some of it back for something. Uh, I've got my stuff over there. That's gonna go up into the assembly room because we actually have parts in there right now that we're needing for cars that we're working on, like the Phantom Cuda needs to buy Plymouth, which is impossible to find. And then I'll paddle lock that door, come down, and nobody gets in there except me with the key. Are you actually gonna go up on the ladder and padlock it? Uh, yes. Oh yeah, that's gonna be the best part, to see my dad actually crawl up the ladder and lock the door. You don't like heights, you don't like water, you really don't like, you don't like anything. Mm -hmm. But heights is definitely one of the top okay. I like the ground. three things. I yeah. like the ground. I'm not a fan of water. I'm not a fan of flying. I've never done it. I'm not a fan of heights. Um, but at the same time, I do what I have to do. That's what I do, right? Oh, God. Yeah, Sweet. I'm scared for you. How you doing? <laughs> Wish I had my phone. Yeah, that'd be Take a funny. picture of this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's right there, Daddy. Short, short legs. No problem. <clears throat> Is there a problem? You did great. Good job. With a massive parts donation inventoried and the 72 Charger aligned, the car is ready for a systems check. The guys finished doing alignment. I saw you and Roy were working on that. Yep. We're gonna do a basic systems check. 
owner of the car, Murray, does not want me to drive the car without him for the first time. He wants to be in the uh, driver's seat for his maiden voyage. I understand that. So we're not going out on the road. We're just going to kind of buzz it around the parking lot. Yep. Uh, make sure the brakes, the steering, I mean, if something's going to happen galactic, it's always great if they happen in the parking lot versus out on the road somewhere. Exactly. Inside check. Yeah. Fire it up. Yep, yep. There you go. Horn blows. Yep. <laughs> Shifter feels good. It doesn't feel bad. That's a Brewer's rebuild there. Yeah. Reverse is nice. First. Power steering feels good. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Just watch your brake. Yeah. See what I mean? So far, everything's going real well on our 72 Charger. Seems to be driving around well. Uh, steering feels good. Uh, for the most part, all the systems are working too. The only thing I'm noticing is that when I go to apply the brakes, that they are harder to push than the typical power brake booster setups that I've driven on the Mopars. Now, that ranges too a little bit, just so you know, the, the Bendix style 70 and back actually has more assist, it feels like, than the 71 on up Midland Ross. It just seems like the brakes just don't have that power assist like they should. We're working properly, but you just gotta apply too much foot pressure. So we're thinking it might be a brake booster, so. Power brake booster is a big vacuum can. Until you hit the brake to energize it, it doesn't use that vacuum. But then when it's ready for it, it gives you that assist. Right now, we're not getting that assist. It feels like you're driving the car, not with manual brakes, which aren't too hard to push, but power brakes that aren't working. That's what it acts like. We're gonna just take this, this is the vacuum gauge. This is gonna show us our inches of vacuum as this goes up. So this has fuel pressure on one side and it has vacuum on the other. I will hook this to this port, just kind of just a little adapter setup. And if you want to hold that right there, I'll get it that. started and I'll be back. I'm going to start the vehicle. Do not defecate yourself, it's a vehicle starting. Nobody wants to see a defecation. I wanted to do something so bad. Defecation, devotion, turning on the night light anyway, and after all the violence and double talk, that's a song. I don't think it's defecation though. <laughs> Should be. You hear that bumpity bump back there? That boom, 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 boom. That's a big cam. Yeah, there you go. This gauge is supposed to be all the way down here in the green, all right? The only way to probably get it there is to open the throttle. problem. We've got too big a cam, too long of a duration, so we're not creating the vacuum that we would get up here. That thing's only getting seven inches of vacuum. It needs 14, 15, 16 in that range to be able to function properly. Okay. So the only way I can achieve that kind of pressure without scattering the engine is the natural process that happens when an engine is revved up to 3,000 RPM and you close the butterflies on that. So I'm open like this, and I close it. When I close it, it's like choking somebody out. You ever choke anybody out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like choking somebody out, and so that vacuum goes off the charts for a second until it catches up and back. Well, okay. you can't drive that way. You're meant to drive the car like a normal person would drive the car. So when he's in an idle, he doesn't even have enough to, to even make these work hardly. So he's basically driving without power brakes. He's driving with a semi-power. About 50% is what I think. In fact, if you didn't even know, if you didn't know your Mopars, you probably wouldn't even know there's a problem with that. I just know that that 71 to 74 style uh, Midland power brake booster, it really is designed to have a lot of assist to it. So I okay. think what we need to do is call him and say, what do you want me to do? You want to be a little Nancy and tap out and take that nice schnarler cam out of there? Or do you want to man up, start doing some leg exercises now and drive the car? Is that actually how you're going to ask him? No, I'll probably just tell him how it's going to be, to be honest <laughs> with you. He seems a little ornery. I don't know if well, you like that. Well, you know, I think he thinks and he's a tough guy, but you know, up in Canada, be. they think they are till they scrap with a with a Springfielder. You think this is a game? You think that's a f game? Old man arm. That ain't old. Look, Look I still that. got a little you something. Got old I don't have no gobbler going down here. Got some weird extra. Your skin's wrinkly. Oh, my God. Yep, that's are it we for done? her. She'll be off are to a psychiatrist now. We're done. We're done. It's always so much fun. Now that the paint has arrived, 
Will is able to spray the iconic General Lee's high-performance engine. The engines used in the General Lee varied from show to show. 318s, 383s, and 440s were all used depending on the requirements of the scene. With the exception of the Dukes of Hazard motion picture, a 426 Hemi was never used. However, once in the TV series, a 511 Hemi was employed, which is a package mod added to the 426. Motor's all painted, looks great. With the engine finished, Will rejoins the ghouls to do the final polish on the 72 Charger before its big reveal. This is the first time I've ever had a client say, nobody drives that car but me for the first time. After that, you have a ball. It's his car, he's the customer, I kept his wishes. But, you know, any, anything can happen. A multitude of things can happen when you have that many moving parts on a car that's just been back together for the first time in, in many, many years. Dave always jumps on the inside, does all the interior. I jump on the outside, tires, wheel, glass. This car has a lot of stainless on it. You have to get the fingerprints off of. Dave has to go through, wipe down the whole inside of the car, do all the glass on the inside. So it's kind of a team effort for us to get this car done. But that's how we've done them in the past. And they always come out great. Inside and out, the car is literally perfect. Um, I think the owner's gonna come in, be super excited to have it, and go on his road trip. So we're ready to go. Murray Gooding's called. He's just down around the corner, so I'm gonna go up front and wait for him. Make sure that the car's on the side and warmed up and ready to go. My name's Murray Gooding's, and I got a 1972 Dodge Charger here at Graveyard Cars. My dad bought a 71 Charger when I was a little guy, and uh, through a divorce and everything else, that car went missing, and it's a car I grew up in, so I always wanted one. I spotted this one on a highway where I, near where I live and got a hold of them, made a deal, bought the car that night and took it home. So that was about 10 years ago. How was the trip down from really good. Canada, eh? Good I drove for a couple hours and I gave him the keys and I went to sleep. Did you really? <laughs> <laughs> there nice. You, go. you look good. Thanks. Yeah, in good shape, huh? Everything yeah. going good? I did all the your... chemo diet, so I'm still keeping That's all that right. Shape. You look good. Yeah, yeah sure. good, good job, man. I was diagnosed with cancer approximately two years ago and went through all the treatment and everything and they cured it all and my only loss is one vocal cord so I can still live life as I love to and it's all good. So you've been thinking about it a little bit, getting kind of excited? Oh, it's like day to day is crazy. I think you're gonna like it and I think it's gonna be really, really well worth waiting. Okay. I want everybody to go out front. I'm gonna go around and get the car. To see it actually on wheels and rolling and moving under its own power is gonna be very, very exciting. All right, you excited to see your car? Oh yeah, let's do it. You excited? Oh yeah. Mark's got it around the corner here, so. Right now the guys are all waiting out front for it. So I'm pulled over here waiting for the queue, uh, kind of a little behind the scenes thing there for you, throw you a little bone. Hey, so We're ready for you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sounds like the dog's ready over there. Anyway, as they, as they kind of wait out there, you know, it's kind of like the, the father, I guess, waiting for his bride to walk down the, the aisle way. It's a pretty proud moment for him. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't take any of this stuff lightly. You know what I'm saying? This is one of those I'm things. waiting for you up here. Because if you didn't hey, make- Hey, Mark, are you, are you doing that thing? Where, you know, the cameras are on you, so you're being silly and- So anyway, what I'm saying is, if you look the at the whole here, total of it, my job- You know, he came down a long ways and I got him out front here waiting. It's 100 degrees outside. You're not too busy. Not trying to stand up in front of everybody. Anyway, yeah, so let's ruin this moment. Oh, yeah, here's something. All right, well, thanks. He's waiting. Oh, man, listen to that thing. Sounds like a Honda. Yeah, you wish. <laughs> Ooh. Boy, doesn't that sound good. That's good. That looks in the sun, too. Boy, doesn't it look amazing outside? That's, her, a, huh? that's amazing, buddy. That is friggin' awesome. You know, I think I've only seen it outside once. That's actually really pretty. That is a gorgeous color. That is a gorgeous color. I gotta color. say, buddy, that's awesome. When people are almost speechless, that's generally the best sign. 
yeah. it means they like it. Most definitely. I mean, outside, inside, it gave it no justice at all. Exactly. But boy, you get that paint out in the sunlight, and boy, it really It's almost it really like a different popped. car when you get it out in the sunlight. You have the chrome shining, you have the oh. glitter and the gold paint sticking out that you can't really even see in the shop. So it looked like a totally different car pulling around the front. It looked beautiful. Did you see yeah. what we had done for you? That looks really, really cool. I bet your dad is uh, very happy with this car right now. Well, I'm sure he's watching right now. He was now. loving that he had a 71, right? Yeah, he had a 71 SE with a 440 automatic. Uh, that thing smoked Camaros and everything else that came up against him. <laughs> I don't uh, doubt it. I don't doubt it a bit. What concerns me is he wouldn't let me drive the car ahead of time. So we're going on an initial maiden voyage in his car, and it just hasn't been on the road. That's not made up. We well, have not driven this car. We have not driven the car. He would not allow me to drive the car. Yeah, have a seat there. What do you think of that shift handle? That's uh, gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? I had the pistol grip shifter hand carved out of a piece of hardwood burl, which is a cancer that grows in trees in the Northwest, which adds to, you know, my dad being a faller. And so I thought it'd be cool to have the uh, pistol grip carved out of real wood and ship that to the woodworker. And uh, he made me a set of just beautiful grips for my pistol grip. So two little tributes in the car for my dad, so. And as per your instruction, we have not been on a road test. So the initial road test needs to be done by you. And I sincerely uh, wish you the best. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it all works out for you. It'll all be good, I'm Normally sure. I road test them. That way when the wheels fly off at 60 miles an hour, you know, I'm the guy that looks bad. But That's okay. I've seen some of the stuff you've done. You can fix anything that goes I wrong I can fix it. anything that goes wrong. nerve-wracking but it was awesome car drove smooth straight it was just super easy you didn't have to fight it nothing it's just straight line change lanes real nice really nice acceleration a little bit on the timing but that's okay it wants to go I don't want to. oh i know it does i know nothing to be funner than just to stop the shit out of him i know you can just feel that there's a whole throttle ahead of you oh yeah wait <laughs> yeah, it's definitely got a lot of pedal yeah. The 71 to 74 B bodies are a really nice driver. They may be the best driver of all the cars they built. I was saying, I think it's running a little bit rich. That might be loading those plugs just a little bit. So if they, they may have a jet for a time. Yeah, when my buddy looked at the video of it running, the exhaust coming out now, he actually said it looked like it was Look, running looked rich. rich. Yeah, yeah, I think it is too. I mean, if that doesn't fix it, I'll put a 750 back on it like you sent it with. They just don't perform as well. You know, as far as balls out, stomp it, perform, you're going to get it out of this, but you also don't want it to pop every time you step on the gas. Yeah, it feels great. But it's it so sure smooth. does feel nice, doesn't it? Yeah, really, That's really great. Nice. Yeah, Royal did the alignment on it. He's been doing it forever and does a great job. Yeah, it doesn't feel so weird. There's like no that. rattles. That's straight. Overall, I think it was very, very successful and a very happy owner. I didn't and get to ride in it. No, you don't need to ride in it. You know, you didn't paint it. I cleaned it. You didn't paint it. Yeah. Boy, it sure feels like a pulse like a Oh, yeah. It's it doesn't feel like no boat anchor. No. Okay. Oh, yeah, my dad would like this car. You know, he's gone now, but he's looking down and the dad on the hood looks great. It's just perfect size, perfect color. Enough that you can see it. And it'll raise some questions and some good stories about the car and the reason there is the car. He does like it. It's not a matter of if he would like it. He does like it. So, so we got the car outside this morning and all warmed up. That's why you hear the fan running in the background. It's cooling down the radiator. Uh, all systems are go. Murray's on his way over right now from the motel to take final delivery of the car and, and head up north with it. This is a neat car, you know. I uh, Sounds good. It sounds, it sounds really good. It's got a great sound. Got a hell of a nice cam in it. His buddy built the engine. We just kind of assembled it, put it together. But whoever built it really did a good job because it, it revs like a small Be block. <laughs> well, my friend, you have waited a long journey for this moment. Yeah, I look at her. She's worth it. You're going to have a lot of fun on that car. Yeah, it's just been a long road. I just can't believe it's actually here the day I get to take her home and start using her and driving her and enjoying her. 
It's been a long, long time, but it's really worth it. Any tiny little things I found, I mentioned to them, they fixed it right up. There was never an issue with quality. It's all been done top notch really, really well. You're a good man. All right, Thanks, buddy. Murray. Keep in touch, all right? Don't wreck it. Well, don't be silly. I know you got that lead foot. I've had speeding tickets before. It's not a big deal. Just got to be polite when you get them. That way they don't tow your car. So. You always open the door for the Thanks, ladies. Guys. Make sure. <laughs> well, then you should get in first. Why well, you got to be coming at the brother like that now? Oh, yeah. We'll burn some rubber getting out of here for sure. It's, it's all good. You look good in there, buddy. You're looking sexy. Looks nice, oh, man. That's a good. panty dropper right there. Got to do the seatbelt. Not that you care up in Canada about panty dropper. just keep your panties on. I don't want to know good about them. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good morning. Take care. In that case, he's a lunatic. He'll be dead in a week. That car's not crazy. He's crazy, isn't he? Well, you got to do that. That's just part of the car, right? They don't call them muscle cars for nothing. See you in a week. See you later, man. Bye-bye. There he goes. Here. Terrorize all the neighbors. Dear God. I think it's a 25 mile an hour residential area. Yeah, there. it is. Well, and it's a new motor. Yeah. <laughs> With the charger out of sight, the ghouls have a moment to catch their breath. Over the last 13 weeks, a lot has been accomplished. Work is nearly complete on the one of one 1969 Hemi Roadrunner convertible. Bill Goldberg was given a jackhammer reveal for his stunning 1968 GTX convertible. And soon after, Brett Torino's ultra rare one of seven 1967 Hemi GTX convertible was finished and delivered. All the while, the car that started it all, our legendary 1971 Phantom Cuda, received its first coat of paint and a newly built out date correct engine making it the first time in 30 years that this car has had a running motor under its shaker hood. And to top it off, our gold 1972 Charger's first test drive went flawlessly and was delivered to yet another happy customer. You couldn't just jump yeah, in. Yeah, she hung out with Lou Albano, had the rubber band stuck through his cheek. Remember that? Whoa, that was whoa, whoa, what are you guys doing? Like doing the same thing we're supposed to be. Me. We are getting started without you because yeah. you Why? were supposed to be. Murray just took off, you. Wait, you guys already <laughs> done the test drive? Oh, fooey on you, you crazy looking. But don't worry, this isn't the end. In fact, we're just getting warmed up. We have some deadlines coming up that uh, are, are worrisome for any shop owner. It's do or die time. I mean, we're either going to get these cars done on time or we're not. The deadlines, are, I, I'm sure, are going to be tighter. we got a whole graveyard full of cars. The body shop is really kind of our uh, bottleneck right now at graveyard cars. They need some direction. They need some, uh, well, frankly, they need a little pick-me-up. You know what I'm saying? A little motivation. Lesson azure. I'll be dialing the body in the paint shop area. We'll be back with more Mopar madness and the rarest, most popular Mopar muscle cars to ever leave the factory, including an exclusive look at history in the making as we bring you Operation Firepower. Stay tuned. The next 13 episodes are just around the corner. The restoration will be televised only on Graveyard Cars.